Am I up? Okay. Today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, from the Common English Bible. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the desert of Judea, announcing, Change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. He was the one of whom Isaiah the prophet spoke when he said, The voice of one shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. John wore clothes made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and all around the Jordan River came to him. As they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been lost? I bet you have. I know I I have several times in more ways than one. I remember one time most clearly for me, though, was with my two girls. They were like eight and five, and our little cocker spaniel dog, who we took on a walk in the foothills of the Rockies. And it was, uh, I thought, going to be a short walk, just a quick little walk outside the cabin where we were staying, and well, we got turned around, and we got lost. I mean really lost off in the, the, the National Forest, and we wandered for many hours. No water, no coats, just some stupid guy and his kids and his dog who weren't prepared. And so I remember when this weird park ranger, who was very strange looking, kind of a mountain guy found us, and I was so thankful because I, I knew that I didn't know how to get back to the cabin. He found us, and he looked bizarre, and he was strange, and his first comment was, what in the, are you doing here? He, he just spewed this energy of intensity like, you people are crazy. What are you doing walking around in the mountains without coats, without water, without a map, without a compass? Well, the point is, we were wandering and we were lost, and there have been other times in my life, either in terms of traveling or in terms of decisions I've made where I've been lost. And we know what it's like for somebody to kind of guide us in the right direction, somebody to point us in the right way so we can find our way back. We can find our way back to where we need to be. Well, the people that came to see John the Baptist were like that. They had been wandering in a wilderness, if you will, trying to find the, the Messiah, the, the one who would come for them, the king that was promised. And they came to the river because this John the Baptist guy was preaching repentance and preaching a direction that they had never heard before. What had always been there before was simply follow the Torah, follow the rules, go to church, be present, and you will find the way. But this guy, John the Baptist, had a whole different message. In fact, if you think about the Advent story about John the Baptist, he was spewing, and that's the word you can use, spewing this incredible, brash, and ugly-sounding word to people. Basically saying, you all need to get your act together. You need to repent. You need to follow the one who will follow me, who is greater than I am, who the prophet's shared in the old, this man is coming, and I am not worthy to tie his sandals. You need to repent now. You need to repent. And so he preached this image of power and confession that they understood. 
Not only did he preach that message to the poor and the ones that were lost, he was also preaching to the church people, right? The people who were the religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the leaders, if you will. And he was saying to them, you all don't understand. I'm preaching not just for the poor and the lost, but I'm preaching for you because you pretend to be the ones in charge, but yet you care about nobody but yourself. You don't care about the hungry. You don't care about the hurting. All you care about is being religious, right? Being a religious person. He preached that message to them. And when you listen to John's message, and then you listen to the message from Jesus, even though they are totally different people, they have a lot of similarities. Their message both had to do with what? The kingdom of God. That phrase kingdom of God is one of the most perplexing, one of the most difficult to understand in the history of the church. What does it mean to find or to be a part of or to anticipate the kingdom of God? Well, there are two ways you can look at this phrase, kingdom of God. The first way is that John and then Jesus were preaching the idea that the kingdom of God is something uh, that is in the present, right? It is the now. And they preach that to these poor people. They preach that word to you and I today that the kingdom of God is present. But I look at the world, as you do, and I see incredible chaos and pain. I see terrorism. I see sexual uh, disabilities and people who are fighting off sexual assault. I see all the injustice that we see. And how can we, as Christians, believe that the kingdom of God is now? Well, that's the same way the people of the the New Testament believed. They thought, well, I'm hungry, I'm poor, I'm oppressed. Where's the kingdom? The other way to look at the kingdom of God is it's something out there kind of in the future, in the sky, if you will. Maybe we think about it as something that will come when we leave this earth, when we pass away, and there'll be this beautiful place, heaven, right? Where we will be with all those who have passed before us, people we love. It'll be perfect. There'll be no pain. There'll be no cancer. There'll be none of the things that we face on this earth. And that's the other view of the kingdom of God. It's out there. So the way we come to understand it as Christians is there is the now, but the not yet. The message of Advent as we journey on this road, as we deal with the things that we face every day, is that we can see glimpses of this kingdom right now. We can see what it's like when somebody loves you, somebody accepts you for who you are. We can see the message that comes when people embrace you when you're hurting, when you've had a bad day, when you feel betrayed, when you feel as if you have been pushed aside, we can sense the kingdom of God when that person reaches out and puts their arm around you. We can sense the kingdom of God is present when we look at this this room, this holy room, and we see all the people that we know and love gathered around, and we think about those who have passed on to be with God, and we think about this perfect world we're in, in the moment. The kingdom of God is present. It's also anticipated for the future. It was all brought in by the birth of Jesus. It was all brought in by the power that Jesus gives to us when we believe in him. We celebrate the baby, but we mostly celebrate the resurrected Christ. The one who followed John the baptizer and walked into the Jordan River as a man and got baptized. That same Jesus that we celebrate as a baby in Bethlehem is who we believe in to be the Savior who ushered in the kingdom of God. So how do we live this out? How do we make a difference? The way we do it is this. We, as those who follow in the light of Christ, have to become for other people the presence and the light so they can sense what the kingdom of God is. What I mean by that is this week, next week, you're going to have a moment when you feel like screaming, maybe cussing, when you're frustrated with the line at the Walmart, or when you're doing this or you're doing that, and you're going to have the tendency, like we all do, to sort of quit being the light of Christ 
and being the rod of incredible retribution. I had that experience on Friday. My email was hacked. I'll share the story now. By the way, if you got a weird email from me, it wasn't from me. My email got hacked, and so I'm on the phone with AT&T. It's my day off. Ho, ho, ho. I'm on the phone with them, and as the hours and the minutes click by, I'm getting more and more frustrated. I can't understand them. Can I get an amen? Anybody experience that? All right. I, I am frustrated, and I feel my blood pressure going up. I feel myself getting to be not really very Christmassy. I thought about my sermon. I thought about my sermon. Is this the kingdom of God? Am I, am I ushering in the kingdom of God with this person on the phone who's trying to help me? I realized no, so I lowered my voice. I took a deep breath. I understood and accepted the fact of where I was, and I did get it fixed. My point is, over the next couple weeks, everybody here is going to face a moment when we lose the sense of what it means to be a, a, a person of faith and of the, of the light of Christ. Because the world, if, even if they don't know it, are counting on us to be part of this kingdom that we profess, that is now. When you reach out to somebody who's in need, when you smile when somebody is in trouble, when you put your arm around somebody who's hurting, when you pray with somebody who's fighting a disease, when you deal with somebody who is in trouble, who is lost, you become the hope. Each one of us can become the part of the kingdom of God that Jesus promised was here. Now, we don't only believe in a future after this life. We believe the kingdom is present. It's not perfect. Lord, no, we know it's not perfect. But it is here. And we are in the middle of it. And we need to celebrate it with the way we live. That's the message of hope. You and me, we are the message of hope. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today on this Sunday of hope, we pray that somehow we can find the courage to be hopeful to those around us. Help us to put away the frustrations and the focus on ourselves and to focus on others. Help us to be the light that makes a difference in this world. Help us to be the people who bring joy and hope to a hurting world. So we offer these words, this message, and this prayer in your holy name, and we pray that we can be your light, your mouth, your feet, your hands, your ears to a world that desperately needs hope. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So now, if you're able, let's please stand.